So I'm present with each of you and I'm present with um, some aspects of what want to come through in the healing container today. And I'll just remind you that this um, transmission and this classroom that we're in together has multiple levels. So there are multiple levels of transmission that are happening. And um, you know, the, it's like when you're hearing a, hearing a note, or if people are singing OM together. I don't know if any of you are in circles where people do that. And it starts with one note, and then someone adds in a harmony, and then someone else adds in another harmony. And the way your body feels this resonant joy that you can't really put words to, when another note comes in and makes that harmony that's so gorgeous, that's what I'm experiencing here with each of you. And, and what's possible and present in this unfolding session today, what's possible and present is, is each person receiving a transmission on the octaves of themselves. So if we speak of the humanness as an octave, the soul level as an octave, the God self, just words I use to try and describe what I'm seeing, uh, the octave of the God self, um, and then the octave of, the, of God or source, or the, the, source that, the source that we arise from, and this source, love, light, eminence, radiance. And each of those in you, as they come online to your awareness, your consciousness, is similar to that living, hearing the, the, the harmonies coming online. And the felt sense of that harmony happening is so exquisite. And that's one of the reasons the smile has not left my face <laughs> since, since we started today. The, the absolute, utter, utter delightful joy of being with that humming of, of consciousness, of the uniqueness of each of you in your octaves of being. And so this is, this is the overarching um, kind of flavor of what's coming through today. Uh, let me just be quiet for a moment. There's a lot that I want to share. Well, this isn't happening in an isolated way. It's, it's happening in the totality. And so the frequencies of the earth are also shifting um, to be able to hold us in our new frequency. And as we shift in our frequency, we support the earth. It's a, um, it's a, a collaborative um, co-creation, where the support, support happens. I was present this morning with the earth. Uh, well, I'll just share my shower is outside where I am in Kauai. A lot of, a lot of homes have showers outside, which I actually deeply love. And so, um, even though the shower has a stone floor on this particular place, um, the grass is nearby. And so I'll stand on the ground barefoot in the morning dew on the grass, the water dew on me, and the, um, the electromagnetic, the, the, um, the electromagnetic fields of the earth uh, the, the, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this, right? The conductivity is um, is more, so the potency of being connected on the earth is more at that moment for me, and um, and perhaps it's just the nature of water and the earth and our our electrical fields. And as I was standing this morning, in preparation for our time together today. My system opened into the oneness of 
the earth and the devas and the elements, which it often does, but this was a coming in in a specific way for our session today. And, um, and there's just a reminder of never being alone. These transmissions do not happen based on Kristen's consciousness. These transmissions are a collective, collaborative creation. And all of nature came in through in that moment, came through in that moment with all this information, this just delicious information of, um, of being held, of actually being the earth and holding the earth, where my eye opened to a larger field where all is inside. So this dovetail being inside and being the whole thing holding, um, and multiple layers of, of those holdings are the nested dolls, you know, little nested eggs or dolls. But that we're everything, so we're both the massive infiniteness that's holding layer upon layer upon layer, where each of those layers and where the inside being held on all of those layers going out. So there's this amazing, um, uh, gorgeousness happening in all directions. And you can actually live that. You can feel that, breathe that, know that, surrender in that, be held by that, love that. Right? That's, it, that can be a, a lived a lived reality that's a felt sense, kinesthetic, embodied engagement with life, with existence, with consciousness. And in this moment, this morning, some of the details that were coming through were the, the, uh, the simplicity that's infinitely present, and the incredible symphony that's created through all the multiplicity that comes together to create unique organisms, unique plants, unique ground, unique minerals, unique weather patterns, unique thoughts, unique emotions, unique bacteria, unique everything and that all of that uniqueness is the same totality singing its own hum of creation through its unique expression which it also has octaves of itself the same way we do so this harmony this symphony is happening in octaves through the uniqueness but in all those unique sound expressions together as this outrageous, stunning symphony of existence. And so this morning, standing out there wet on wet dew with the information just, just um, uh, I don't know what word to use, it's not, it's like there's no movement that happens, there's a sense of conductivity but water is conscious and, and in the oneness of the water, the information is just shared and present. And so in this moment of seeming water conductivity, <laughs> right, there was just the presence then of, of the information all just being um, seamless in through the water and in through my consciousness, in through my body, in through the earth, in through the dew drops, in through the, the, the water that was on my skin. And it's an impossibility of separation. It's not, it's not possible. And, and I was with all the elements and the elements are also conscious. And so all these indigenous cultures that speak of fire and air and water and earth 
being conscious and alive is not a childhood fantasy or an underdeveloped, um, I forget what it's called when people, the word for when you project your own reality onto something else. Um, I forget the word, but it's, that's, that's not what was happening. There's a deep embodied recognition of what's actually happening and what we all are. And so in this morning's experience, the, I was present with those elements in their organization as they create all of existence of this earth plane, of the rocks and the plants and breath and my body and the soil. I was was with those elements in their refined organization in the co-creation of uniqueness. And I was with this also in detail and through the body and through the different octaves of that individuated trajectory of the octaves of the soul, light body, God self, and divine uh, radiant eminence essence of source light that we are, the sort of the trajectory of our own inner harmony, of those octaves in harmony. So I was present with the, the elements as they come together in that co-creation, in through those octaves of my being, and was aware that on the soul level, in the soul classroom today, that there was going to be a, um, uh, a sharing uh, a, a classroom, right? A, a, a teaching, an offering, an illuminating, an illumination of of what is already present. But that that was going to be one of the aspects of the um, of our session today, because my understanding of what these three sessions are about is to support the grounding of the higher illumination frequencies that are present and able to actually um, ground and be embodied. And what this means, again in my understanding, is that those octaves of our being on the fundamental levels, the elemental levels of air, fire, water, earth, there are different different systems have four and five different elements and it doesn't it doesn't matter so much it's just that we're getting to that refined place of consciousness and and consciously engaging with the the elemental consciousness that is um let me say this differently if something's not quite right in the way my words are um, forming. Um, In the soul classroom today, we're going to be engaging with elemental consciousness in the varied octaves that it is also co-creating the universe. And then that we are co-creating that universe with that, with those elements as well. And so on the soul level, there are fine-tuned adjustments that are needed, that are wanting to happen, that are available, that are being invited, um, that are being offered, that are being engaged with to support the octaves of yourself, of those, those, um, all those layers, to come into such harmony and alignment like a focusing of the aperture of all of these bodies um, to be able to have that frequency of the radiance of the light make its way through all those physical aspects of you. Each of these octaves have 
a, have a body, have an energetic body. So um, that's why I'm using the word physical. So it's a, an energetic physical body. I, it has a form. I can use it that way. So maybe physical isn't the right word. Uh, it feels that way to me, but, but it's, the, it's, it's form. And then we'll also address the body. Uh, I don't know if this is all going to happen today or if this is going to build on itself over the three classes. It may be when I speak about the body taking it in to, to be able to have the body. It, it, we may do elements of that today. It may be that that's the last of the three sessions. I'm not sure. We will, we'll, we'll get to find out together. So I'm just seeing... Um, in through the physical component and that um, the the down stepping that happens of the light through it's actually more there are more layers I usually address these layers more when I'm speaking about surrendering or through the mental body and the emotional body and the etheric body the physical body through um, memory DNA karma and um, each of these bodies that I speak of, each of these octaves, have um, kind of a strata within each of them, the same way this physical body has all these chakras and different functions that correspond with each of those chakras. And, you know, I'll speak about the mental body, the emotional body, right? The etheric body. And so there's, a, there's multiple refinement that occurs in each of these octaves of being. And so in my silence, um, I was just sitting with uh, the felt sense of the, just the reminder of when we're clearing through the body, it's not just the physical body. The physical body is dancing itself based on the conditioning behind it. So the physical form is manifesting in this way in part because of all that is behind it that is humming to then manifest both in the the Uh, substance of the creation of your flesh to have the particular kind of body that you have, you know, with the DNA plus your own soul conditioning um, trajectory plan for this lifetime. Right? So if, if part of your incarnation is to be a brilliant um, piano player, you're going to have fingers that are able to be really fluid. Right, or if you're a, to be a professional football player, you're going to be pretty solid, <laughs> right? So there's a there's a, a collaborative co-creation that happens in the beginning of the actual creation of the substance of your form of this vehicle, and then there's additional layers that um, from your thoughts, the beliefs, the emotions, the conditioning from this lifetime, and then past life conditioning as things unfold in this life for learning and growth to um, unfold and bloom. And there's a way in which we've been taught in this life, this culture, that things are more solid than they actually are. And so we can relate to our body as something heavy and dense that has some physical problem or that's, that's more solid than it and unchangeable than is actually the truth. The truth of the matter, right? <laughs> Speaking about matter. And, um, and so... The density, so the form, the physical form can change. It can change dramatically. And 
once we start relating to this, recognizing the changeability, all sorts of other possibilities open. What was also present in this moment of silence that I um, just needed to uh, rest in um, was the, the sense of density of our emotional conditioning. That that conditioning has um, substance to it also. It has form to it. And it can feel it can feel emotionally hard to be with the, the movement of it. But the way that I'm seeing the trajectory for this session, and perhaps, you know, this is for all the sessions, is that as that light comes through and starts shifting and the elemental consciousness is gifting its co-creative collaborative efforts of, of transformation and creation, that as that happens in through the soul level, the light coming through is going to then have more access to coming in contact with the density of your conditioning in a way that is highly efficient. And that we're more used to the weight and effort of navigating challenging emotions. We're more used to the challenge of that and the weight of that than we are the ease and grace of light coming through. And so I want to invite you to open to a different experience, to open to the grace and the illumination that's present that will make it easier. And what comes forward is water. If our pipes are clogged and we need to flush them out, you can bring in more water and it will flush the debris. And fire or illumination. Fire transforms light when suddenly light hits a place that there's been shadow. Consciousness is transformed. You can't see it the same way anymore. It has literally been transformed in through that light. So all of these elements have these octaves. I was also present this morning with oxygen of molecules of oxygen in their <laughs> traversing the planet or the universe, however far oxygen goes. I have no idea. But in terms of the wisdom, with each inhale, all this oxygen that has been out running around, roaming around the planet, is then embodied and animates my flesh, animates this vehicle. And so I'm kind of jumping from different octaves here, from the soul octave of having the elements come in and support the, the rearranging of your form to be able to receive more of the purity of your being. And then jumping into the physicalness, the humanness of breathing infinite, this oxygen that's, that's uh, been infinitely recycled with all that wisdom. And as we start to integrate and shift on these upper octaves, the physical body octave can then start to integrate and open more and it starts to recognize what's really happening. And 
where you may not have been paying attention to your breath and been focusing on doing some activity, as the system starts to open, one can recognize you're, you're inhaling the universe, you're inhaling the, the wisdom of an oxygen molecule, a bunch of them, with each breath, that has just been around for how many years? How many, I don't know how many billion years, right? All that wisdom, and then the physical body starts to then recognize itself as this collaborative creation in which earth, air, fire, water, all these minerals and molecules and atoms are all conspiring. They're all coming together to create this. And this is your living embodied vehicle. And so then as you're breathing, doing your work, it completely changes what used to be a focused, uh, almost isolated, focused intention of work, then actually becomes the universe having a divine activity of service, of self-expression, of love, of joy. And so this transformation happening on, on all of these levels keeps building and opening and uh, bringing forward the stunning refined detail simultaneously with the magnificent expansive infiniteness. And so we then become, we recognize and live the, the, if we go back to the nesting dolls, we go back to then living all those layers of nesting dolls simultaneously. With consciousness, we're living the expansiveness of the universe that is here embodied in the smallness of this one life pouring, you know, water into a glass to drink. So, this is, and, and when I speak about the ecstaticness, right, this is, this is where the ecstaticness comes from. And it's the same thing as the harmony that I was speaking about when one is open in these different octaves of oneself and this harmony singing, and when you're hearing people oming, singing a note, and then and har harmony notes start coming in, these new tones, to the joy of another harmony, another note coming in, right? That, that joy, that becomes the lived experience, living this symphony both in the embodiment of the vehicle and being in oneness with the environment that is made of the same substance as the vehicle. And this ecstaticness comes from living, experiencing that harmony on all those levels in through one's trajectory to source. And through the embodiment of the oneness of all of these planes of existence. And part of the maturing that I experience and see in others, the maturing of awakening, is the continued refinement of the understanding, the recognition, or the seeming boundaries of the individuated aspect in the oneness of that whole plane. so that one can then stay steady in each of these octaves of being where you are humming, 
It's no different than when you're learning how to sing and you're asked to hold a note while someone else sings another note. It can be tricky. That's, that's what this whole thing is. It's that simple is that you are this divine gift of this note singing, this one unique note singing, but you're also the totality. So how can you rest as your own unique note singing and stay steady with that while being in harmony with everything else, while you're one, while you are everything else? So this awakening for me, the way I see it is a refinement of that, and so we start to wake up on the personality level and then we can go into oneness. And then there's a refinement of, well, okay, you can feel everyone else's emotions right now. Can you still recognize the difference between yours and your neighbors or your sisters or your brothers or your mothers or your lovers? Right? So there's a refining of opening through the oneness but then knowing yours and then being in the harmony of that the harmony of the co-creating. And then this happens on the next level, opening up to the next level of self-recognition and recognizing the individuated embodiment and opening through the oneness of the plane and then starting to discern. And so this discerning, this refining of that boundary is the, the maturing. And what I love about the sound image is that it's, it's, it's more accurate than the use of the word boundary. Because when we say boundary, we think of something solid. And when we're singing, you're holding your note true while another is holding their note true. So that's... that's the boundary that I'm speaking about. So the word boundary is, um, makes sense in this physical realm where things seem more solid. You know, where maybe you close the door, right? And you're making a physical boundary in that way. But in terms of consciousness and the maturing and the awakening, it's more like singing. And that as you stay steady, in your true note, you can stay steady where, when someone else is off key. And you can stay steady when someone else is in harmony but singing a different note. So right now on the planet, there is a lot of singing that is off key. And, and in the awakening, people are starting to recognize and open up to their own pure note and start seeing the purity of that and then singing themselves into their own harmony. So then you are then in the harmony of your own octaves. And as you continue to rest with this and continue to orient towards this and continue to meditate, to ground in this, then it's easier in your daily life when someone else is singing off key that you can stay in yours and just hear it as a dissonant harmony. It still is a harmony. It just has a little dissonance in it. Sometimes music does that, sound does that. And then as you deepen in this in yourself, then you can recognize when you have a note that has a little sense of disharmony. But you can then be with both in yourself at the same time. It's the same thing. You can rest in the true note of your divine sound, your divine singing and hear, oh, I hear this, these words or this emotion or this thought has a little bit of off note sounding to, tone to it. And without judging it, one can then continue to focus on the deeper true note sound in yourself. And the same way that I use the analogy of tuning forks, of, of me being a C note, singing this deep harmony of truth and a uniqueness can help resonate the C note in you of that deep truth harmony note in you. 
right? The same way we, the notes can attune in that way and that they can shift. So um, just to clarify, if you have one note tuning fork in a room, if, you have the, if they're the same note and you hit one, the other one will start vibrating without it actually physically being touched. Because the frequency is what that note resonates at at its frequency. So it, it just naturally starts to resonate at that frequency. So that's the value of these sessions. But the same principle is true in yourself. So that when you are resting and access that deep, true note of yourself, and you recognize there's a disharmony happening, if you focus your attention on the deep note that's true, it will shift the disharmony into harmony. And this is where surrendering is really useful and surrendering identity. Because one of these notes inside ourselves that has a sense of disharmony to it, where we can feel, ooh, those words, those words, that sound coming out, the way I said that, the way that felt when I said it doesn't feel clean or doesn't feel like it has the, this deep truth that we know. Those bits come from conditioning. There's a, a identification that's present. And so in the harmonizing internally of a disharmonious note, with your true resonant note, in the harmonizing of those, the off note has to surrender. The sense of I am in that expression that it's having. I'm angry. That person is bugging me. This is wrong. It should be different. Whatever the thought is, there's identity in that. And so, the practice that I have often spoken about for years, um, about, I've used the analogy of, a, a, of um, a fist, a muscle, you know, clenching, that when you're about to hold something, you know, if you've held on to something, you can feel the muscle tightening, right? And that, um, just briefly, the surrender practice that I had spoken about for years was uh, to recognize if you're about to clutch on to something, you're, you can feel something rising up in you, you're about to get angry and blame somebody, and sometimes you can catch it before you've done that, right? So the, the, the off note is starting, right? And once um, being in the resonance of that, the identification of that, and you can soften and let go. And when we've already identified with something, the fist is a whole, it's already being held. So the repeating pattern of this shouldn't be this way, that's already being held, it shouldn't be this way, and then something happens, it shouldn't be this way, it shouldn't be this way. So the whole system's fixated, it's held. And so the, the value of the practice of surrendering is to let, to let go. And we can do it in the moment before it happens. And then there are moments that are already held, and so we're meeting the same kinesthetic quality of relaxing and letting go to a moment that's already been fixed. So one can practice noticing where on that trajectory of, of identification um, the system is. Is it rising up in that moment to grasp it? It just happened so quickly you couldn't stop it, but you saw that it happened? Has it been happening a really long time? Right? There's this whole range and meeting that surrender um, in through any of those moments of the identification supports the letting go of the substance of that creation, the, the, the energetic conditioning of anger or frustration, or blame, or discontentment. And so as we, as in this conversation and the sharing, as, as I'm starting to speak to this conditioning more as a frequency than a, a held substance, both are true. Depends on which octave of being you're looking at. But since we're shifting to frequency and speaking from, from that resonance, the place where identity is then letting go 
as you rest in that note, that deep resonant note of that harmony in yourself and notice the frequency sound, the, re- the dissonance of the other one, of the, the expression that you're recognizing is not quite in that true expression. When we focus on this deeper place, you can still end up going through and experiencing the same sensation of, of letting go. It can also be experienced differently where it's a, it's a more refined quality of letting go of that substance, letting go of the, the harmony, the disharmony. But the identification still lets go. It still needs to let go. And I'm wanting to just articulate this a little bit to help you navigate the sense the sensations and thoughts and emotions that may come up for you in this process through today and through the next next two classes. So the quality of letting go of identification. The felt sense of that and I'm just going to be with this in this moment as I speak about it. So transmitting what I'm talking about in this moment is when identity lets go of itself, there is a sense of not existing or, a, or a, um, no longer being. It's a cessation of the experience of the sense of self through and from the reality that was just being created in the previous moment. So right now, in this moment, I'm sitting with this transmission, uh, amplification of the sense of self letting go of itself where it does not have a name. It does not have a known identity. It does not have a known location. It lets go of its location in the universe. I'm just sustaining this for a little bit longer (coughs) as people, as each of you um, take note of this, either in your physical body or in the soul classroom for just taking notes on um, this principle or this function, or this aspect of creation. It's the erasing, the eraser part of creation, where you want to you wanna create something different, so you erase, you clear the page. You erase what was there. And this can be erased in this way, it can be erased through transformation, where the focus is more on what's becoming, what's in the next moment, what the transformation uh, transforms into. But there's a key component here in awakening of the non-existent, the cessation, the stopping, the, the erasing component. It's profoundly useful to become comfortable with letting go so deep. And so this is an essential component of the process of embodying the light through all these octaves of being because the old form needs to change where the old form is changing. And depending on how deeply identified you are with your old structures, your old strategies, it will be easier 
or less easy in the transformation. And so the purpose in this moment of staying steady with this transformative, dissolving, cessation nature of existence is it helps your bodies and your minds and your hearts become more familiar with this (laughs) (laughs) non-experience. To make it easier for you when it is time in your own process through these sessions, when it is time for you to meet this dissolving aspect of your own nature. I'm present on multiple levels here. And I'm seeing from a perspective of of, um, seeing humanity. And there's just immense compassion coming out, just present in the, as the cessation, this transformative identity surrendering is present, I'm starting to feel some of the thought forms that come up around the fear of the dissolving. The one that is showing up the most right now is a sense of um, perhaps guilt or self-judgment of like having to see what was created. Like it's almost like a shock of oh gosh, I have to look at what was created that I think is bad, and it's like it needs to be dissolved because it was bad. Like there's some identification of shame or judgment in the midst of this as I see this light coming to illuminate and transform. And I want to really encourage a a different attitude, a different mindset, a different approach, a different understanding of what's actually happening. And that it's not that things have been created that are shameful that should be transformed. It's that there's a natural evolution of consciousness occurring. And this is a large-scale transformation that's happening. It's happening in through the universe. It is happening in a much larger scale and much larger capacity. And so... If you can recognize this and relate to this in yourself as that nothing has been bad, nothing has been wrong, there is no shame, there is no self-judgment or blame needed, that all that is simply happening is the higher light of the truth of you, the truth of your nature, is coming in because it's time. It's just simply the time in the universe for this to occur. And so, we then in our humanness and in our soul consciousness of stories are graced with the light and love of the truth of our nature knocking on the door. Please, may I come. I'm here. I'm yours. I'm you. And so the invitation is to let go of your stories of blame and judgment and hurt and shame and wrongdoing in all directions and to simply open to the light and the love and the grace that you are, that you are gifted, that is gifted to you, that you gift to yourself.